been committed in the small town of Seychelles. That's right. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for CTV News on June 5th. The small town of Seychelles is located just north of Vancouver. It happened in a small house just north of the town along the coast of British Columbia. That's right, Trevor. Now this town is shocked at the murder because there had never been a murder in Seychelles before. Seychelles is a quiet town with a population of around 5,000 people and no one knows why this happened. That's right. Joining us live tonight from Seychelles to tell us more is Mitchell. Mitchell, what can you tell us? Well, Tamara, there's not much happening right now, but it was a scene like no other, just at 2 o'clock today. In the small quiet town of Seychelles, where no one suspects it, a murder has happened. Police aren't saying much, but they do say it happened in this house. Someone came right through the open door and hit the victim on the head with a large object. The police don't have any murder weapon yet, or a reason why anyone would do this. They are tracking this case closely and calling it a homicide. Now so far, there's been two suspects. Right now, they've released one name and are currently looking for a fish truck with rainbows on it selling salmon. So Mitch, do you know what the suspect's names are? One is George Wilcox, and the other, for now, is unknown. Alright, thanks Mitch. That was Mitchiello joining us live tonight from Seychelles. If you have any information that can help police find the missing fish truck, you're asked to call the police at 989-5045. The truck is described as an old Volkswagen van painted silver with flakes of paint, with big rainbows on each side, and two bluebirds. The man is described as a 38-year-old with a beard, wearing jeans, and a light shirt. In other news tonight... Welcome back. Our continuing coverage of the Seychelles murder continues. As you saw yesterday, a no man known now as Carlisle Burke was killed in his home shortly after 12 yesterday afternoon. We have exclusive coverage of the murder. Our cameras captured an interview with George Wilcox, one of the suspects. Here's what happened. Excuse me, are you George Wilcox? Yes. Yeah. Are you available for an interview right now? Yes. So, Mr. Wilcox, how did you happen to find the body of Carlisle Burke? Was the door open? No, closed. I banged on it, no answer. Started back up the path, then I decided I'd better check up on him. He's 85 years old. Was. Was he in ill health? Ill health? How should I know? The fact of the matter is, Sonny, at 85, everything is running out fast. Any minute, something essential could go on you. So, you checked on him? Yes, I came back to the door and banged on it harder and hollered, but nothing happened, so I tried the door. I it opened and never locked the door. That's good to know. Why are you so sure he, were, he was hit on the head? Couldn't it have been an accident? Yes, I came back to the door and banged on it harder and hollered, but nothing happened, so I tried the door and it opened. He never locked his doors. So I walked down the hall. No, he wouldn't be in the kitchen. I looked in the kitchen window while waiting on the step. So I came down the hall calling his name and I got to the living room. I had to blink my eyes a few times. The sun made me blurry for a minute and I looked around and saw him lying there. His eyes were open. Did you come here often? I used to come here sometimes, not very often. Why yesterday? What made it be yesterday? It was one of those spur of the moment things. Mr. Carla was a friend of yours, right? I knew him. Do you know anyone that might have wanted Mr. Burke dead? I didn't know him all that well. So, but you knew you didn't like him much, did you? No, I didn't, but us old timers, you know how it is. We usually don't like to see each other get bashed in the head. Why were you so sure he was bashed on the head? Couldn't he have been hit by accident? There wasn't anything near enough for him to blast it on. There wasn't anything knocked over, and there wasn't blood anywhere except on him in that carpet. You're very observant, Mr. Wilcox. A thing like that, finding a thing like that, it gets burned into your brain. I think I'd like to go home now. Thank you for your time, Mr. Wilcox. You're welcome. Joining us again from Shishelt is Mitch Yellow. Mitch, tell us where the murder is going on. Well, Trevor, I can tell you that they still have only two suspects. In both cases don't have backup. As you saw in the video, George found Mr. Burke's body, and the peddler who sells fish can be long gone by now. Now Mitch, has this, been, has this murder been done on purpose? Was it a robbery or was it just at random? Well, police aren't saying much, but they do tell us that it was done on purpose. And there's been nothing stolen except two shell casings, which they learned later this afternoon. Back to you guys. Alright, thanks Mitch. Well, that was Mitch Yellow reporting for us live tonight from Shishelt. We'll have more coverage of the Shishelt murder tomorrow as we learn more.
Thanks for joining us for CTV News on June 9th. Our coverage of the Seychelles murder continues. Yesterday was the day of the funeral, and we have learned more about the Carlisle Burke. Carlisle Burke was born in 1899. At one point, he owned his own barbershop, but mainly he is remembered as being a music teacher in Vancouver. In the mid-1950s, he met and married Audrey Wilcox, George Wilcox's sister. Two years into their marriage, Audrey was killed in a tragic car accident. In 1979, Carlisle returned to Seychelles, where he enjoyed activities such as fishing and playing the piano. As you know, he was murdered this past Tuesday. Left to mourn are his brother-in-law, George Wilcox, and Carlisle's only sister, Helen Morris, who lives in Winnipeg. CTV News was in the neighborhood today to see what the neighbors were up to. Well, I saw George come walking along there from the direction of his own place, and I saw him just go through the gate into Carlisle's front yard just a few minutes after 12.30 p.m. I disagree with you. I completely did. But uh, go on, go on. It's my usual habit to have lunch here with Molly at noon precisely. We have lunch at the kitchen table, and we listen to the 12 o'clock news. This has become a routine. Immediately after lunch, which lasts about half an hour, it is custom to go to the back garden while Molly does up the dishes. So after walking around the yard, I usually go inside to wait for my 1.15 Tuesday appointment. So instead of following a routine today, just to find out that I had to go to the hospital for some tests, I go and sit on the front porch instead of going in. I remember this well. That's when I saw George at Carlisle's house. He's a good man, that George. He's been reading to the sick, reading to the sick at the hospital. Anyway, Frank has got the time wrong. No. Doctor's appointments. On Tuesday, they were switched. They were not. They were switched. It was at 3.30, not 1.15. They no. switched it this week. Anyways, yeah, they changed it this week, so he got his times wrong, that's all. So we probably did see George, just at a later time. I told you. I disagree. I told you. We will continue with this Seychelles murder as more details occur. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. The Seychelles murder has a new twist to it. It's been a week now, and we have more evidence that George did, in fact, commit a murder. Joining us live tonight is Mitchell Aiello. Mitch, what is going on? Well, Tamara, I can tell you last night, George Wilcox was out rowing Carlisle's boat near 11 o'clock. Police aren't saying much, but they have said that they are very close to solving this small town mystery. Here's what police say happened. George went out rowing late using Carlisle's boat. Police speculate that he dropped what could be the murder weapon into the water. They are now using extensive measures to try and retrieve this unknown object, which could be the shell casings that were reported as missing from Carlisle's living room. As we continue to mourn the loss of one of our own, the town of Setchelt is feeling less secure than ever before. Joining us live on the phone tonight from Setchelt is Staff Sergeant Carl, Carl Alberg. Sorry. Carl, we hear that George was out rowing last night. There's been some speculation that he was dumping the possible murder weapons. Are these statements true? As far as we can tell, yes. We are currently searching for whatever he may have dumped out there. We're using everything from divers to underwater cameras and side scan sonar. There's something out there. We'll find it. Are you absolutely convinced that Mr. Wilcox killed Mr. Burke? I am. How can you be so sure? There doesn't seem to be a lot of solid evidence against him. Do you think that he did it because he knew he was in the will? Not at all. There isn't much that Carlisle had that George would want. As you may recall, Carlisle was married to George's sister, Audrey. She died two months into their marriage. George never liked Carlisle to begin with. He didn't trust him. Although the autopsy showed that all her injuries were sustained in the accident, I think George sus suspected something else was going on. Car accident or no car accident, he blamed Bert for the death. Well, this opens up a whole new angle to the case, but I have to ask, is George capable of murder? Is he strong enough to have, this, to have done this? He is 80 years old, after all. I believe that he is. It is all the gardening he does. Keeps him in shape. Thank you for joining us tonight, Carl. We'll be in touch. Good night. That was, that was Carl Alberg, a 40-year-old staff sergeant based in the town of Seychelles. He had been in force for 20 years and now has handed out fewer than a dozen homicides that hadn't been solved at the scene or within 24 hours. He has been in Seychelles for about 18 months now. He had been in Kamloops for five years before making the move to Seychelles. He's the town's only hope for solving this bizarre. CTV News will be right